So hello guys and welcome to this new video on the game engine series. Now in the three previous video we have been talking about the map parsing system. So we created our map parser which we actually use to parse like this map on the screen right here. So this was just a showcase, it doesn't have to look like this. So we can actually draw different types of maps and you know somehow uh, draw them on the screen using our uh, map parser. So um, I also uh, said in the previous video that you guys could you know draw some kind of map and send me that somehow and I'll simply showcase that in the beginning of the videos that's still available if you guys are interested in that so go ahead and draw a map with tile and you know somehow create a github or whatever and I'll simply try to showcase that in the beginning of the videos now in this video we're gonna be talking about the camera and um, yeah we're gonna be try to use it to move things around or things are gonna be moved according to the camera so to say and uh, yeah that's what we're gonna be doing so let's get started Now the first thing we need to do is to create our camera class. So I'm going to say class and I'm going to say camera and we need to add a new folder called camera. So make sure you have a header and a CPP file. So we just create it. Yes, yes. So now we have our folder created. I need to close some of these files right here. Not so much open right now. All of these in that later on. So the first thing we'll need to add right here in our camera is some important properties that the camera will have. So first of all, we want to make sure this class is um, yeah not instant inst instantiable. So we want to make it singleton. We don't want to have like. Uh, you know many object of the camera the camera is you know we only have one of these so we have to make sure that we make this static class and for that we need our constructor to be private and we need to create our instance to make sure we get track on current object now there are also some important component we want to add right here like the target at which the, the camera should be set it. so because the camera need to follow for example the player and for that we need like a vector but we won't use a vector in this case we're going to be creating a new class called point we're going to be creating a point it's basically like a structure but i know we could still use a vector as the target of our camera but it's important for us to make the difference between a vector and a point so that's why I I decided that we're gonna be creating a new class called point so make sure you put it in the physics in the physics folder we we'll go to the physics folder yep. Add it right there and we say it, it should be a single header file we don't need a cpp file to implement anything yes okay. so basically this class is not so different from our vector class we don't we don't have to create a lot of things basically the same so i'm just gonna paste like the code right here so we start from up here we have our class and we have those two components the x and the y axis so you guys know what that is and uh, the rest is just the same thing as the vector so if you want to add if you want to add two point for example all that kind of stuff i think it's pretty straightforward we also added this log function to be able to get track on the value of this vector this is just for debug purposes so that's also important because sometimes you have some issue and you need something like this to make sure the value you're waiting is actually the one the computer is actually uh, using. So we just move uh, over to our camera and there we need to include that 
point top to include reset point and now we need to set the target point and target so this is actually um, this point we're going to be using and the value we're going to be giving to this camera in our case is going to be the center the origin of our player so we're going to be making a calculation about the origin of our player and then pass it through to the camera and the camera will, will try to get track on that value on the value of the center of the player and will always update the screen according to that value but we also need a vector so we need a like our vector class right here vector we need like the position the current posi position of the camera so we need to define that also because we're going to be using that to calculate the value of all components on the screen that are going to be drawn on the screen so they, they're going to be recalculated using this position of the camera that's why it's important so we also need to add like a like a view box because we want our camera to have like a space in which you know the values or the tile whatever might gonna be drawn or the screen need to be drawn because this is also uh, how we're gonna be optimizing this we also do uh, in such a way that only those uh, pictures or graphic that are inside of the camera are gonna be drawn on the screen so if anything is outside of the camera we don't care about that this is actually going to be saving a lot of computer results and you know our computer will not struggle to draw everything on the screen even though we don't need that so as the camera will need will move forward we will then draw those components on the screen and you know somehow it's more efficient so and for that we need to add SDL we're going to be using like a rect because our camera is going to be uh, rectangle actually so add sdl and uh, yeah just simply gonna say sdl rect so i'm gonna call it view box so you can call it whatever you want it doesn't matter so i'm just gonna call it view box now you can call it a camera view or whatever so we've got this now we need to add some method to this class and um, the first one we need is the get view box function so we have inline we say sdl rect get view box and we return our view box so this is actually in point we also need a function to get the value, the current value of the position, which is also going to be, um, yeah, in line because we don't want to you know, mess up writing too much things. So we just say in line, and this is going to be the vector, and we want to add our position right here. So we also have to add something else. Uh, we need another function called add target because we want to specify our set target. So we want this uh, method to actually set the value of the target that the camera should get track on. So which point the camera should you know always track that target, and it takes a pointer to a point. So because we always want to get track on the value that. The point actually has so and uh, we want to make sure our target is equal to that so we simply say target is equal to target. so our constructor right here needs like um, you know initialization we need to initialize our view box we want to make sure that the view box has this size right here so it's actually started on on, on the right top of, of the screen right here with the zero on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis and you know move till the end of the of the window of the screen actually so uh, if I have to open this right here this is not right so open this 
So our camera will start here. We'll take this whole space right here. And every time we move our player, we'll simply move that rectangle around and, you know, trying to shift that or translate that so that we get like a scrolling effect. So this is actually what we're going to be doing. So we need to initialize this. So I think that's um, what we needed from this side. We need to add a last one. We need to put this guy down here. We need a last method, which is going to be the update. So this is also important because we're going to be updating the, the the actual position of the of the camera every time. Just for now, just put our delta time. We won't use it to update, but you know we don't know what will happen in the future. So this could be point. Now the constructor and the this stuff here are not needed, so we can simply remove them. We need to add method without implementation. Uh, the camera, I think we already have it right here. Point anymore. So this already implemented. So why do they want to add it again? I think this thing right here. No. Okay, yeah, I understand because we forgot this one right. That's important, and we didn't say and view box is crazy. I don't know why I've been writing some crazy stuff like this. So um, we need to make sure we have exactly. So that's perfect. Move this. Now this update function is also pretty straightforward we don't need that much so it's it's not complicated but we first need to initialize our our instance because if you don't do that you will get through some right i want to deal with that right now so i'm just going to paste the code and try to explain um, as much as i can now we always want to make sure the target is in you know a null pointer want to make sure this target actually exists that's why we're checking right here okay is this target is this target right right does it exist now we want to take the current value of the view box on the x and the y axis we want it to be um, the size screen divided by two because we want when the player cross the middle of the screen when the player start crossing the middle of the screen right here we want to start our scrolling right there so we, we don't want to start scrolling when he's moving like here to here. So when he starts from here to the middle, we don't scroll anything. But when he cross the middle of the screen, then we start moving. We start, you know, shifting our camera, move things around. That's actually what we want to do. And uh, yeah, and we also want to check if the player goes over the view box. If he gets over the view box, then we also want to make sure we keep it on the, you know, that it never goes out of the camera actually that's the idea now here we also check the current value because we want to make sure we're actually using this like this for now but this is going to be changed later on this is actually how wide um, our our map is so if you remember the map we've created had something like uh, 60 uh, 60 tile width something like that so that, that is something like 32 multiplied by 60 which is something i don't know right now but yeah it's something around because our screen size if i go over to our um, what do they call it, the engine is something like this i really want to change this to something even better a little bit bigger this but it doesn't matter so we have like two times the value we have there and uh, yeah we want to make sure okay our player don't also go on the right side we want we don't want it to go over the map so this is the side of the map and the same thing is done with the height but we only keep our screen on the height we don't put more we will change this later and you will see how this actually affects the value of the camera so this is basically what we have uh, for the camera class we need now to go over to our player and uh, we need to calculate the origin of the player and return that as a point so that we can later get that origin and set that as a target for our camera so we switch over to the warrior we go to character and we go to warrior 
So we want to add something new here. I don't know if we actually have something like that. Origin. Do we? No, we don't. Uh, it will also be a good idea to add this on the parent class, like for example, um, I don't know the game object because all game ob object would probably need to have an origin that could be used to apply force or something like that. It's not a bad idea to do that actually. So we can go to our game object right here and we want to add like a point for that we first of all need to include that point up here so we include point so that's uh that's important for us to make sure we add and uh, now we go down here and we somehow say point we want it to be a pointer because you know we want to get track on that every time so we say origin and uh, yeah we can also initialize that right here like this guy right here so we can simply go ahead and say um, m origin is equal to new point and we can actually initialize this with the value of um, we can actually calculate this using the, the transform because you know if you want to have the middle of the center of an object we take the current position and we uh, plus the width divided by two and the same thing with the height so that's actually the id so we can simply go ahead and say like like this so we use a float and we'll say it's equal to prop and uh, we want to get like um, um the x value it's a pointer okay want to get the x value plus props want to get the width and we divide it by two i'm not sure if i have to divide outside or here no it's here so i don't need to do it right here I need to do the same thing for the y axis so and then kind of put like y right here and this should be the height i don't know why this is not auto you know checking my stuff but and here we just initialize this point using the px and the py we have our new point created so we can switch over to our player and we want to update this every time with the current position of the player so that's why it's important for us we can simply go ahead and say uh, to the warrior also need to open the cpp file in the update function right here we want to add like uh, like uh, this um, how we want to update our origin right here so we can simply go ahead and add something right here and say m origin and uh, i don't know what does it have a method no. an x it's gonna be equal to the transform x plus the width divided by it. and we do the same thing for y axis we want to update the current center of the object because since our object is moving every time we want to make sure that we always update the current value of the origin so that the camera can always move according to that now we need to add a get method right here to get that value because we want to actually get that value and return it so we can simply go ahead and add a get value right here we're going to say inline inline point pointer get origin so got this we say return and origin so that pretty much it so we want to test this and see if this is actually working and the, and the way we have to do this switch over to your engine to your engine class so core engine.cpp and here before we return this true we want to set the value of the camera so we need to include the camera up here to the camera and here we want to say camera get instance, instance 
the no I see get instance and there we want to say set target where is the guy set target and there we simply say warrior a player instead player our player we just created up here we want to get origin I don't know why it's not showing up right now but we're gonna see the reason why origin that should be it let me try to compile it I know we have something wrong somewhere here so what is wrong right here so let us and see the, the real reason so uh, it seems correct right here. I don't know what it's trying to do yeah. and I compile it again. see the error message screen width ah screen width is actually not declared because we haven't ate our engine class so that we had an ate our engine class so that we can access those constant so we still have something wrong uh, this operator as the direct is equal to this so maybe we should okay and the problem was because I didn't name this value correctly in my engine here the name was wrong that's why I was getting some trouble and also um, yeah I did declare my PX uh, twice so that was a problem actually now um, everything should be correct so it should normally compile right now so we set the target but we still need to update you know the camera so we need to do it right here oh not in the in this guy right here so um, I think we have to do this it doesn't matter right now before the map, after the map, it doesn't matter. Get instance, and we say update. Also pass the delta time, even though we don't need it. So if you compile right now, nothing will happen because um, no one has been drawn according to the camera. So no one is affected by the value by the camera actually. So the way we can actually make this possible is we want to go to our graphic and go to the texture manager that CPP there I want you to include your camera class so include camera so we're gonna be starting with um, let's say with the draw tile as the first guy so so what, we, what we're gonna be doing right now is we're gonna be um, calculating the destination rectangle according to the camera position and for that we need to get the current camera position so vector um whatever you want camera and we say get instance we want to say get position we get the current value of the camera and now we need to calculate the target rectangle so where this rectangle needs to be drawn on the screen according to the value of the camera so we need to shift it since the camera is going to be moving uh, you know in both direction the value of, of this x of this uh, of this guy right here is going to be shifted according to the value of the camera right now and everything is going to be done internally we don't need to somehow you know fix anything or try to do anything about this but uh, this should be yeah like this so i think that basically what we need and uh, if we try to compile this let me close this guy and uh, we try to move you see those tiles are simply moving and we have to do this for all objects that we want to be uh, that we want uh, that they move according to the camera actually so if you have like a background image we could have something like a moving ratio which we define how fast the background should move according to the camera so the scrolling ratio something like that so we need to do this same thing for for the, for the other function uh, for this draw frame right here because we want to make sure that also does the same work so just grab this right here and paste it here it's yeah we we don't have anything right now that actually has to be moved according to this but uh, we i think we're going to be trying to use like a 
like a background image and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So what we can do right now is go to your engine.cpp there we want to load like a background image no matter what kind so I need to find one right now since this is nothing uh, this is not something that I prepared I just want to show this so you guys can see what I mean I'm gonna find a background image uh, right now that I can use so I went into my assets folder and there I created a new folder called images and in that folder I added this background image right here so let me open it up so you can see uh, my computer is a little bit crappy doesn't work the way I expect it so we have it right here we have this background image right here that you can see it's, um, it's a nice background so we're gonna be drawing this and we'll actually uh, let it scroll scroll with another with another speed you want to scroll like those tiles will have like another ratio so the first thing we need to do for that is to load that image so we simply grab like function right here I paste it so I'm gonna just hit the ID as BG for background and I go to my assets folder images and there I think the name is bg.png let me make sure I got the right name so bg.png so we load our image now we simply need to draw it the render right here so we want to do it before the map or it will cover the map so make sure you draw it after the map uh, before the map texture manager get instance we want like we want to draw like a static because it is static but we want to scroll that's why we won't use the draw frame function we use the draw we say bg now we need some information about the size of that image so um, i need to find that out um, so I need to go here and check something. Yeah. Give me a second for that. So this is actually the size of the image. This is the width and this is the height. And we want to draw it uh, at this position right here with zero zero. It doesn't matter right now. Now I want to change something in our texture manager because we haven't had this camera stuff up there. So just kind of copy this. And uh, I think we can simply put that up here. The destination could be basically changed just like that. Now, I want us to add something. So if I compile it right now, I always close this, compile this. Oh, the background is not here. So I need to find the reason why. Let me go back and see the destination. We have this guy right here. Um, let's go back and check this in the engine. So texture get draw ah this ID wasn't correct. I'm sorry. I need to rerun this and we got our background. So if I try to scroll you will see it actually scroll with the same speed as those style right here, but that's not actually what we want because normally this should be something which is like a mountain like mountains and they should move with the with another ratio and we want to set that actually and the way you can actually do that is you can go to your um to your texture right here but now we're just dealing with that right, like that so it doesn't it doesn't matter so we want to multiply this value the value of the camera right here with like 0 0.5 we want it to move with another ratio we we'll multiply it by 0 0.5 and we'll actually see that it will be a little bit different you see this guy is moving with the speed and this other has another speed because since our image won't be so huge if you let it scroll with the same speed as the tile then you probably have some space where your background is not fitting and we don't want that actually so that's why we want to make sure that the background is moving slowly and we we'll always have our image covering the screen and the tiles will be drawn everywhere we want to want it to be and to, yeah uh, we still have to deal with the gravity and because we with the collision that's why our player is not falling right now so that's it for this video i hope it wasn't too long and i hope you guys are enjoying so think about to support me on patreon and even leave a comment in the description below if you have any question concern if anything wasn't clear uh see you in the next video ciao